Well, howdy, everybody. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Welcome aboard. So I'm wearing my Miss Dolly t-shirt today. Looky there, huh? Leah got me that, so I wouldn't be lonely and, uh, you know, cheat on her with other women. But what she doesn't know is if, Dolly, you're watching right now, I know you're an honorable lady. But if you want to leave it all, leave Hollywood, come out. Right here, cowboy up with me. I'll tell you what, I can offer you chickens. Leave all that behind. Leave all that behind, Miss Dolly. And you come out here and I'll take you under my little wing and I can offer you chickens and a couple of horses. There you go. Get back to your roots. So, how about that? I think Leah would be all right with that fact. I think Leah would just be, uh, she would be mad for a little bit, but you know, it would be Dolly. So, forgiveness would be forthwith and with coming. All right, let me do, I'm gonna do an informational today. I, I, you know, I do mostly just video journals, whatever I'm working on, y'all stuck with. Sometimes I get a lot of views, sometimes I get few views, you know, because it gets repetitive, right, when I'm building. But today, looky here, I've got the last bit of wall. And it gives me a, an opportunity to show y'all how I'm building. I tell you, I build in four foot sections at a time. And indeed, I got a four foot section here. Notice up there on the roof that it's missing insulation. So I got a chance to finish up insulation and I'm missing a little narrow strip of insulation here. So I can do all the steps that it takes to do a shipping container in a four foot section. I can, um, you know, the posts are in already and the superstructure's in already, the electric's in. But I can start with the insulation, the furring strips, the mineral wool, then the drywall, and uh, just wrap it all up. I think I could get all that done in one video that's not real long. So that will be my goal today, uh, to get all of that done and taken care of. My horses have come up a couple of times and I've missed them, so they have not gotten fed. But as soon as they hear me out here, they're gonna be out here, uh, uh, you know, rustling up. And Miss Dolly, the offer still stands. I, I measured myself in a, you know, morally, and I, I know that it's not an honorable request, but it stands, girl. You come visit. All right, so after the structural components, which are all in, I've got the support post in, I've got the electric in, uh, the next step is to get all the insulation on. I use this stuff and I buy it directly. Infrastop insulation. It's two-sided foil with bubble wrap in it. And I use that right up against the shipping container. And uh, I haven't had any container sweat uh, behind this when it's done right. All the way tight, taped in, and I think it's because it doesn't allow air to circulate. So uh, trapped moisture might be in there, but in Texas, uh, you know, the humidity's not very high most of the time. And... Uh, so I can manage that, uh, and I could block the uh, the thermal energy of condensate with this stuff. So I put that on. Then I followed up with uh, professional grade uh, foil, and uh, this uh, aluminum foil tape is super good, and it comes in very long lengths. None of this was very expensive, and. Uh, uh, so I bought enough to do both shipping containers at once. I, I forget, a hundred bucks a roll or something. Uh, you'll have to look it up and check it yourself. <laughs> I'm not going to redo the research. I'm just letting you know what I use. Uh, but this stuff's super good. So let me go ahead and set you up and I'll get the roof done. And uh, But there you go. Infrastop insulation with aluminum foil. That's the next step. So step one is the post. Step two. You know, post and electric. Step two is the insulation of the bubble wrap. So let me get that going. For those of you who might think it's uh, pretty low of me to, you know, solicit a Miss Dolly based on a shirt that Leah gave me, I have given Leah Rob Thomas shirts. And every time I do, she goes, ah, and then she tells me she likes a bald-headed man. Come on now. That is, come on now. Anyway. I, you know, if uh, Rob Thomas ever left his wife and ran off with Leah, I, I just have to forgive her. I just have to forgive her. So, up oh, the horses are up. Let's take care of them. You boys missed your breakfast, or well, I ignored you. And now you're standing there for lunch. You are good horses. You are good horses, aren't you, Mr. Patience? All right, let's get you some food. 
For those of you who are all, all natural kind of folks and uh, you got flies that you want to take care of, let me tell you, this stuff is the best stuff that I've found. <clears throat> Knocks the flies right and mosquitoes right off the horses and uh, makes their fur uh, unpalatable to the animals. And uh, I don't even know what's in it. Let's see, it looks like geranium and lemongrass oil. If I'm reading right, yeah, geranium and lemongrass oil. So, uh, man, I'll tell you, and his swore horses smell great. <laughs> so get yourself some of this stuff. I can really recommend it. And look how good old the Blaze is getting with the food time. See, his ears aren't back anymore. He's not all ugly mooded. Uh, he still spooks every now and then when I just walk up to him. Well, uh, I'll spray him with the fly spray. He doesn't particularly care for that. He thinks he, I'm being mean when I give him the fly spray, but I'm not, I'm not. He stomps and sometimes walks off when I do that, but I don't see any flies on him today. Not a few. See, look at that, he's letting me handle him. Now I'm still careful because uh, he's not having it. See the little kicky? Not only would that be a fly kick, but it would be a, a Steve kick. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I irritate him too much. But old Hank here, he's he's the gentleman of the crew. I'll get Blaze there. I'm, I've am i made a lot of progress. I'm feeling much safer around Blaze. Interesting because uh, the horses don't, or flies don't like Blaze as much as they do old Hank here. But watch this stuff. All right. You see? Look at that. You all see that? Oh, those guys will be dead in just a few seconds. And uh, again, it, it smells like lemongrass, so it's super good. And this will do all day long. Look how they're chewing them up down there. They will chew right through to his skin. And then what I use if they make breakthrough is just your typical, typical uh, triple antibiotic like you would use for your kids. He doesn't really like his face done, but see, I killed him already. That one's dead. Bunch of them dead. I do not let them chew up my horses every day. So I treat them every day with this stuff. It doesn't like last for forever, but it's it's healthy. It's cheap. And uh, I feel safe around it. So there we go. Horses taken care of. I guess that's step 2.1 in building the walls. Let me get this insulation up. Infrastrap, two foils, it's a two-sided bubble wrap with aluminum foil sandwiching the, the bubbles. Really good stuff. I mean, it dropped the heat tremendously. I had it on the outside on the roof, but a hurricane came and stripped it all off, including the uh, the tarp that I had up there. So, uh, But if your wind wasn't as bad, man, you could get by for a season uh, that way with an immediate delivery while you're working. Just put that bubble wrap on the top, I'll wrap it with a... Uh, uh, tarp and uh, man you in the heat you'd be down. I measured 40 degrees on this stuff. All right, let me get this up So I'm pretty good at reusing everything the one nice thing about being a self builder is uh, they're very little waste <laughs> it is it is that sun is texas sun it's already bright all right so i found some more out in the shed uh leftover rolls so i'm going to use those up and i'll tape them all now it is interesting to note that this stuff has a even though it's just foil bubble wrap with foil on it it really has a feedback. I mean, it wants to not be moved. <laughs> it really pushes, uh, pushes back at you. So it's best to put it up 
where you have room. And I had it up here, but again, I had a storm come in and rip everything the heck it back. One of the disadvantages of building by yourself is the slow rate makes it easier for things to get out of hand. And I can feel while I'm doing this that the heat just go away, literally go away. So yeah, while I did that, instantly the heat dropped. So nothing fancy on that stuff. I just put it up against the wall and then I come in with mineral wool and I pack it with mineral wool and then it pushes it against the, uh, against the container walls. I don't glue it, I don't anything. And then I come and tape the seams like that so there's a vapor barrier. So I'll tuck that one in and then tape its seam. And then I'll have a, a vapor barrier seam right there. So let me do that right over there in that corner. I'll get a little piece and we'll finish it up. All right, so I've got everything <clears throat> all bubble wrapped, foiled, protected. I've got the little cracks and crevices, everything taped. There's no vapor seam anywhere. So the next step, step three, first I have the post and the structural stuff, then I have the bubble wrap. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the furring strips all the way around. And then this one, I have to do the furring strips up inside where the, uh, the roof will meet right there. I don't have that done yet. So I'll be cutting two by tens for there so I can overlap the, uh, the four by four post because this spot doesn't have it. Normally it would. All the rest of them, that's how I did it. So this, I didn't quite know what, how the end was gonna be so I didn't wanna have ties there to, to make that too stiff and rigid, but I'm happy. So I'll do that. I'll shoot this whole thing with furring strips I'll put this together on this end to get these propped up. We'll get insulation over the top. So anyway, furring strips is next. And I just rough cut those and put them in because they're not structural inside of this house. They're simply there to hold the uh, drywall. And occasionally, if one's a little loose, I'll go ahead and, and mount it right to the uh, shipping container. I'll just screw right through with a self-tapping screw, and I'll mount it right to there. But most of the time, I tie it into the post uh, with wood screws. But on occasion, I'll go ahead and reinforce it with one or two uh, structural screws right through to the wall. So then I know the drywall is not, not doing anything other than sticking right there. Okay, let's get the uh, rafters ties done first. 
Uh, those will be the two by 10. Uh, 18 and a half, nine, 24, 13 and a half. All right, let's see if I can remember all those numbers. <laughs> so people might think building the rafters out of treated is uh, um, overkill. But I bet I had a hundred year old row house down here. And when I went up to work on the roof and I walked on the peak, uh, termites came out from, from the rafters. So, uh, and that's just regular Texas termites. Uh, wait until those Formosan ones get down here. Then it'll be serious business. Oh, what was the last number? 18 and a half? Hmm. Well, all right, let's see how close we got. Let's see how close I got. All right, I have all the roof locking in, so I'm just going to toe nail it uh, into each rafter. Nothing fancy here. All right, I use two by sixes on the bottom, and that's just. I use two by sixes, so if somebody accidentally kicks the wall while walking, I don't have a two by four there to make the, uh, you know, to have them break the wall. So I just mark them and cut them, and it's just that easy. Normally I ripped them uh, one by uh, along here, but see this is going to be a door and uh, you know there'll be some out, uh, outside energy against it. So I'm going to use two by fours flat all the way around on the inside. Uh, again, it might be an over engineering thing, but I'll feel happier if a door slams, you know, I want this rigid so that it's not vibrating through the house and uh, you know, crack and drywall and whatnot. So uh, I'm going to use Two by fours the rest of the way. Well, it's sundown once again, and uh, it's a weekend, so I've got time to work. So it's going to get too dark for y'all. I'm going to turn on the shop light and uh, keep working. But uh, as you can see, it's um, pretty easy to do this particular method of 
of construction. You know, you got your post. If you put them perfectly four foot apart, then the drywall would just cut and go in, minus the whatever you put there, like, uh, you know, outlets or ledges or whatever you have, windows. So, uh, but let me get this last cut while I still have a little light. So I'm, I traced around the log, so all I'm going to do is jigsaw around it now. Big smile. I got a big smile. I think I got a big smile. I do too, because I'm getting close to the end. Alright, so it's getting too dark to video, but it's not too dark for me to work. So I'm going to put up the camera as, so you just don't have black, uh, which occasionally I do. So uh, as you see, I don't cheat on furring either. On a thousand year house, everything I'm doing is designed to last a thousand years. I know the aluminum foil will last a thousand years. The plastic should last a thousand years. And even if it gives up, It'll still have that gap in there doing its job. Mineral wool is just rock. It'll last a thousand years. And then uh, by using treated two by fours, if the Formosan termites get here, if a mouse tries to get in, um, water, anything like that happens, then I know the two by fours aren't going to mold and rot and fall apart. So uh, I don't cheat on anything. So, and I am using the full two by four here. Once I'm done toenailing these in, I'll come back in and I'll use lag bolts and I'll, I'll bolt the frame to the environment. And every now and then I might tie it in uh, if I find a loose board, wobble, 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 uh, right straight to the shipping container. So uh, this is Steve of Thousand Year Home. And I've got uh, in this, uh, this thing, I'm gonna try to put it together in one video, all the steps it takes to do a little four foot section in the house. And uh, so um, you have the structural, you have the electric, you have the bubble wrap, uh, you have the furring strip, then you'll have the mineral wool, finally the drywall. So those will be all the steps. And I'm on the furring strips right now. Well, hey everybody here, this is Steve. Uh, another day, I'm still working on the grand entrance, but it's a hot day in the winter. It'll be over 90 today in Texas, which concerns me because it'll be another year of intense drought. I am drought worn out, so, but let me look here. So there's my wall design. If you're looking, 86 is what the wall's currently reading. Let's go out and take a look at what the shipping container would have been in the raw before I did these steps. Uh, so, cause my uh, system is a super good system and I'm proud of it and it'll work for people. So, 136, see, 136. 135 so that's uh, 40 let's see 14 for uh, uh, 50 degree temperature difference between and, I, and nothing fancy no airs running no tricks no bells no whistles nothing's running between the same spot in the wall that's 135 on the outside of my shipping container and it's 86 on these walls right now so this is why I'm, I'm doing this little microcosm of the grand entrance because it's, it's all the steps. It's the, the architectural component, it's the power component, it's the bubble wrap, and then it's the insulation over it, and then the drywall. And you'll see that those steps give me a 50 degree delta 
uh, on a winter day. There's some other things, uh, technical things about this house. Like it's not on true south. It's a few degrees off the south, which is designed to knock the heat away in the summer. You optimize uh, winter warmth as well as give me the maximum amount of solar in my position without having to do weird things with my solar. There's little things like that that you'll have to study yourself. But in my neck of the woods, the few degrees difference is perfect for shedding heat while simultaneously optimizing warmth and, uh, you know, solar. All right, let's continue on with what I need to accomplish today. All right, there's a lot of custom doodaddery <laughs> that I do daddy. Now, if you've been following the show, there's other episodes where I talk about uh, behind this metal, there is a an high beam that comes out, changes the dimensions. In the corner, it ties into the pillars that are actually the true support of a shipping container. So your dimensions change a little bit. Well, that leaves me with some difficulties that I have to solve. They're not real complex. I'm just going to cut and work, cut and work. So if you notice that this piece and that piece, they're aligned pretty good, right? Um, now I'll shim that up ever so slightly because my drywall will come and rest right against the top of this beam and run this way. So I'll have to tuck that in as best I can and I'll probably have to cut around it, uh, which is normal. And then over here on this end, you'll see that I notched it for the, uh, it goes right around the beam and that's by design. I just keep the live edge. But on the top, I need to do a little dimensional change so that from here to there is level. And so I'll get my level, we'll do that dimension, and then I'll notch a two by four and I'll put a two by four on top of it, screw it all together. So when I drop that two by four in here, um, all I have to do is cut out the spot right here. And the two by four will have a lid that the drywall can rest against on this end. So. Um, Again, it's not this—it's not conventional stick framing because the uh, shipping container itself is the structure. I'm simply attaching furring strips. So if somebody comes in, oh, that's not the right way to make a header. And it's not a header, right? It's not a header. The, the header is, you know, the shipping container. The thing I walked out there and showed you was 135. And you know, this bubble wrap, it's not even that. I don't let, we'll get the thing and see what that is. Alright, what, what did the bubble wrap cut it? Just by itself. Yeah, it, it, all by itself even before. So it's mostly the bubble wrap that's that's doing the uh, the cutting. It's just a few degrees difference, so. But anyway, uh, that's what I'm working on. And uh, uh, the shipping container itself, for a guy like me, uh, I'm not a skilled, uh, I'm not a skilled, uh, I haven't built a lot of houses or anything. I'm, this is not, I'm an off-grid builder, a solo builder, all by my lonesome. You might be too. It's the shipping container that's the square edges and the, the shell, right? The structural energy. I am just making sure when I attach things to it that I put the right bolts in it and it ain't going nowhere. Anyway, that corner, uh, as you get towards the end of your shipping containers, has additional complexity because of the pillar and the I-beam that's in there. In addition, mine has some uh, power conduit running. So let's go ahead and tackle those uh, issues right now. All right, I'm gonna keep the uh, the roof is, and some, this roof actually has some pitches. Like in the bathroom, I run a pitch so that the moisture will be drawn out of the window. So, you know, I don't want a lot of moisture inside of this container. I wanna keep mold away. Uh, but here I've decided I, I do want it flat. Okay, so one and three eighths is what I need to make the top of this little piece that comes to here so this will be level. And you can see right there, I, I don't know if you can see it, but there's there's what I'm trying to get around is there's an I-beam back in there. All right, let's build this, this back brace for the drywall and uh, make it all fit in there. Thirty-five and three-eighths is what it was between those two uprights.
If I did that right, then it'll go right up in there. The conduit will be able to pass through this side and then I'll have a place to nail drywall there and there. And then that will be supporting up on the piece. So that let's put that up. All right. Let's see if that quarter inch was the secret sauce. a little while of fiddling I had to readjust some of the early connections I made to the post but you could see that I could put drywall here and here so I've, I've got both spots for it and I feel good about that I'll do the same thing on the other end just a lot of fiddly work with the corners and uh, you'll have to do that yourself even if you're a better craftsman than me simply because the dimensions run out uh, in the corners and of the shipping containers This is the thing about building with non-dimensional lumber. I have a little gap there that I'll have to trim in and it's pretty tight there. And then in between each one of those, I'll put a blocking plate all the way back in out of a two by 10. I think I'll cut those next and get those in there. So the drywall has something in between each section to screw to. It gives me a nice tight edge. Oh, still furring. I'm still doing furring strips. <laughs> As I mentioned before, everything is treated. I'll oh, see, not that one. Not this one. Not that one. This one.
All right, so that wraps up my furring. Everything is reinforced, ready to receive drywall. Uh, the, everything's then 24 inches of each other, actually 21. So plenty of, plenty of reinforcement, uh, notched wherever I needed to. Well, everything's reinforced. I, I'll do something here if I have to. That drywall, uh, when I moved it with my fork truck, I damaged it more than when I bought it. But here's the problem. It's hard for me to find 12 foot, 5 8 inch drywall. So I'm going to try to save this piece, these two pieces. But I need a 4 foot section straight in there, a 4 foot section up in there, and, uh, you know, this one's only four foot up there. So I think I can cut it out and make it all fit. But the next step is um, insulation. And I'll put insulation in each one of those spots. And uh, insulation's my least favorite thing. I need absolutely no excuse to hide from insulation. So, and it's 90 today. So uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm ooh, dragging my feet. But let me go ahead and get in there. I'm all out of the wire rods, uh, but somewhere around here I have some stainless steel safety wire. And if I can uh, find that, I'll go ahead and run st uh, stainless steel safety wire between each one of those bays to hold up the insulation as I stick it up in there. And also I'll suit up, so I'm all suited up. So let me see if I can find my supplies to get that done. If not, I'll have to go buy 24 inch um, uh, ins insulation, installation wire. So we'll see. <laughs> insulation, installation wires. That's a mouthful. All right. So the next step here is uh, insulation. And uh, weirdly, a winter day, it's 92. So I've let the uh, sun go down uh, a little bit and it's in the evening. But let's take an inventory of the stuff I'm going to use. All right, so in my neck of the woods, I'm using an Owens Coring Fiber uh, product called Thermal Fiber. It's also called Mineral Wool. This isn't glass. It does. It's uh, hydrophobic. It gets rid of water. It doesn't like it. It also has better sound and uh, deadening, as well as 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit fire resistance. Uh, out here in Texas, where wildfires are a, a fact of life, I'm, I'm counting on that to help. <laughs> then I have my uh, 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 suit to put on and I have my disposable mask to put on. I've got 16 inch uh, insulation supports but only a few of them left and uh, that is 17 and they're uh, 14 so uh, and th those are 20 uh, up there. So what I've decided to do with the 20 is pull some survey flags that are 24 inch I'll pull the flags out and thread those in. I also have this, which I'll staple up if I need to. You do not want that stuff dropping down. Uh, safety glasses is a musk, a must. And then uh, I love this Red Devil insulation knife. Uh, you can use a bread knife, but this thing just stays sharp for forever. It's still cutting through. I've not sharpened it since I've started. All right, so there we go. Uh, that's, that's it in detail. And uh, let me go ahead and set you up and I'll start working up above. Um, like I said uh, before, uh, insulation's my least favorite project, probably yours too. <laughs> so, and I'm hot, it's still hot, but it's in its 80s somewhere. But let get, let's get this done right here. Oh, one last thing I should mention is uh, I've tried to insulate both the walls and the ceiling. The problem in an eight foot container is raising the drywall. If I bump the sides at all, I'll either mound up the insulation, I'll bunch it up, or I'll even knock it out. Then I have to rehang it. So the better way to do it is to do the ceiling. And then of course you do your dry in insulation drywall on the walls and that helps support your ceilings on the end. Uh, I'm a big fan of drywall in these uh, shipping containers. I think it's the right way to go. And I know that I'm going to whip, uh, I know that I'm going to beat the uh, problem with moisture with this. I've noticed that as soon as I bring out insulation, a little bit lands on the lenses and then it starts messing up the focus. So if it goes out while I'm working, my humble apologies. Let me get you set up so you can watch me work.
Don't let those guys fool you. They've been fed multiple times today. I'm going to believe that they're just here for the moral support. You here for moral support? Horsey? Good, I'm proud of you. Thank you for morally supporting your owner. Well, hey y'all, this is Steve of A Thousand Year Home. So I got home today, uh, it's late, uh, the sun is going down, but I think I have enough time to continue my series of how I do these wall sections. This will be a little longer video because it is educational, but uh, you see there I've got the furring strips, the insulation, the post, the electric in. Up there I have actually the insulation and Last night I just stuck a little bit in there. If I go too high in the insulation when I go to install it, and the, the sheetrock in, inevitably uh, touches the, the insulation, it pops it out, dumps it back on me, makes the drywall even tougher. But what I'm gonna do in the dying light here is I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece of drywall and bring in the, uh, the lift and uh, set this up so maybe I can even get that in before it gets too dark, we'll see. You've had three meals, so you're not going to get a fourth. Right. So I disparagingly call this thing the finger pincher 4000 because it always pinches a finger. <laughs> that, is, that is the flat out truth. Uh, but you could not safely do drywall without one of these things. So. Uh, having said what I've said, this is a Harbor Freight model drywall lift. If you're doing drywall above your head, no, if you want to become an old man and you're a young man, fastest way to do that is to fall off a ladder while you're doing drywall. That's a silly way to get hurt. So as a solo builder, the only way to get it done is with a lift. So I call this a finger pinch 4000. It's not, it's just your standard run-of-the-mill drywall lift. There's better ones out there, more articulation. But listen, I can get probably what I paid for it, take it to a pawn shop, keep it in the back for years, cut it into a fence, I don't know. But this is the right way to put drywall up above your head. Probably less than two minutes to put that up, even chewing while chewing out the horses. So uh, anyway, get yourself one of those. It's the right way to do this job. So I say I build in four foot sections and really if you were doing this in a hurry you would so that you don't have as much cutting as I do but it's not that is actually 46 wide by 82 long um, so uh, 
I've got some 5 8 inch drywall that I bought already damaged, but when I was moving it in on the fork truck, I damaged it again. So I'm going to be measuring for a little bit to find out, for example, 46. Can I cut that out, right? And uh, this is, uh, I bought it this way because I cannot find any 5 8 inch drywall in my area. You'll find uh, videos of me complaining about Home Depot wrecking my drywall, and here you'll say, oh, Steve, you got wrecked drywall. Well, the face side isn't. It, it's the back side and the edges. And again, I'm not true 48 inch. But if you are more of a stickler for the rules, I built this for uh, my organic, where uh, the windows I had bought, the where they fit, how I wanted it balanced. Let me rotate. You'll notice I have little alcoves like that that I put in. So none of these beams are perfectly 48 inch. But if I wanted to punch out a bunch of these quick, Obviously I would, right? I'd make them all 48 inch, but I didn't. I, I did what I believe will look best for my eyeball. And in that particular case, it leaves me a little odd thing going around this post here, but it plays to my favor. Now I need to find a sheet of drywall that's not damaged that I could put on the, uh, the lift and get it up without causing a whole lot of problems. And I'm, I, you know, so I'll be a few minutes while I, I, figure that all out. All right, so I measured twice and hopefully I cut once. So there's the length of it. And then I, uh, whatever the measurement is, I come in like a half inch all the way around so that I have a little wiggle room. These are not dimensionally true. And if there's a knot anywhere on that log uh, that I haven't calculated, I'm gonna hit that knot and not be able to hang, hang drywall. So a little bit short is what I want. Uh, that's the midpoint. So all of these have been measured and lastly I give some kind of indication of what side is what for the taper. So um, now let me go ahead and cut that and uh, Get that staged and I'll put it up on there and then we'll crank it and put it up to the top Now, 5 8 inch is not your half inch that you'd normally find in most houses in America. It's uh, high quality, and uh, to cut through, you're going to have to press a little bit harder than normal. I'm sure if I did this every day, all day long, I'd have just the right secret soft, but I have learned that I need to make two passes, and I need the second pass to press pretty hard. I, I don't know why uh, anybody would work with half inch uh, unless it wasn't their house. I mean, half inch is lighter and flimsier, and uh, you know, I could see why people would be attracted for that. But you see the wave of the studs in half inch, and there's even thinner than that. I think there's three eighths inch. <laughs> you might as well just uh, broadcast all your imperfect studs with that stuff. But this has a depth, a dimensional depth. And even these rough cut timbers I'm working with, you won't be able to see where they're rough cut because I'll be using uh, a 5 8 inch. It will make it disappear. So 
I uh, got glue in my knife blade, so I'm working with an old knife edge. I really wish I wasn't. All right. busy all week and I am definitely tired. I came in on street clothes. I'm wearing street clothes right now. Because I've just been running and running and running and running. But I think I have enough time to do this one part of this video. Get this up for y'all. a minute to clean up that cut sheet because I don't want anything in my way as well as get a nice sharp knife that will make such a better edge for me and I do like to cut both edges length and width at the same time and do it this way especially if it's standing up try to avoid peeling the ends by cutting both of them and then working my way towards the middle. And, uh, I'm trying to keep as much of the uh, edge alive as I can. It just saves me a little extra work later on. All right. So it is getting dark. Uh, it is dusk. So I'll keep working hard and hopefully the video won't be uh, too distracting. All right, so I've got the piece cut. Right dimension. Now all I got to do is muscle it up there. And uh, it's no longer 115 pounds a piece. I'm probably looking at 80 pounds. 80 pounds is not very much fun. And if you'll notice, I've got this little weird edge here, right, that I've got to accommodate for. So when I first put that on, it'll, it'll be, I'll try to hook it up there and do some things. Uh, and uh, I'm all set up there, but there's still some additional cross pieces I want to put down here when I do the walls. So the walls aren't ready yet, but um, I might not video those because it's the same process, ceiling or wall. None of these have been easy. <laughs> and that's why people use dimensional lumber. This, uh, this kind of stuff super hard every time. Yeah. <laughs> I can get it tucked up over that log without breaking it. I'll be super happy. I'm going to have to put you on pause while I work out that log. This will be the same thing that I just did. Uh, 
I tip it, get it up to the log, <clears throat> and then tuck it in and then raise it. But I got to get it all the way down to the end. I just can't do video and do that and work with that much weight above my head. I'll be right back. All right, so it's up. It ain't pretty, but it's up. So here where things got weird, I needed to get out a jigsaw and jigsaw a little bit of that off while it was still loose. And then it, it popped up in there, but it, it was a Herculean test. It already looks great though, doesn't it? Uh, I'll tell you, putting drywall up against a, a live edge, super hard, but well worth it. The reward will be well worth it. So I got home about 5.30 and I started this video right away in my street clothes. Uh, I looked just now when I turned it on, 6.49. I haven't taken a break for anything like, you know, water, anything. So uh, what is that, an hour and a half that I've been working on? Hmm, hour and 10 minutes that I've been working on one sheet of drywall. It's to the point where I could put some blocks in there and screw it in and, and have that up. And it looks good. Now, I didn't have any electric there because I have electric here. And, uh, you know, a light every four, two foot is too much. So, uh, but that will be a ceiling fan. So looking good. Let me go ahead and uh, put some screws in that. So that's the fourth and final step of um, doing these four foot sections, except the finish. Obviously, you know, uh, <laughs> priming, finishing, painting, plastering, all that. But I mean, the assembly part is there. And uh, so that methodology is the same thing. I put drywall screws no more than two foot apart and uh, a little closer than that, like 18 inches all the way around. Those, uh, well, I, I lost some. I had little little markers where the rafters were. Let me see the little markers. That tells me where the rafters are, where I can run screws, and I'll run screws all the way across that. So uh, it'll be it'll be a good assembly and uh, already man it just looks great it feels good it was tough to do all by yourself so not for the faint of heart let me go ahead and put you on uh, stop while I go ahead and put some things in there it's just too hard to work in the dark and video at the same time so I'll be back to you in a minute. Whew, 13 minutes if I decide to speed walk that. I probably will. So uh, let me rotate. So uh, again, I, I followed at all of the screws up. Uh, I'll go pass through there again. I didn't tear through very many times, but my shoulders are burning. I'm tired. Uh, you know, there's a little mess there where I had to jigsaw it. A little mess there where I had to jigsaw it. All that will be fixed in process, uh, post-processing with mud. So, uh, super exciting, super exciting. So I'll get these two walls done tomorrow and uh, they're less hard work. I'm already taking down my stand and that's the final step for prepping the walls. So, uh, real good. So let me get that done tomorrow and then I'll put one big video up. All right, I've been doing a little educational video on how I do these four foot sections of flat furring strip, fully insulated. I also demonstrated it was 138 uh, degrees Fahrenheit on the outside and about 86 on the inside. So I'm getting a significant 50 degrees sometimes drop in temperature just through this uh, 
just through this uh, system that I'm using. So once I'm done with the the uh, the architectural components of it, the uh, electric and the post, then I do the furring strip, then I do, or I do the bubble wrap, then the furring strip, and uh, the, I do mineral wool. I've been stripping it down the middle so that it'll fit the three inch uh, or the inch and a half size instead of three inch, which it is. You can only compress it so far and then it loses its ability. And mineral wool has lots of things. Go watch other videos on how good it is, but that's my choice, mineral wool. And I'm to the point where I'm putting drywall. And last night I got drywall up on the ceiling. Today it's a lunch break, but let me rotate. So here's my problem is these, uh, uh, I can't find five eighths inch, 10 foot drywall anywhere. And that's what I need. So I bought the last few 12 foot drywall pieces. And unfortunately moving that one in, I broke it with a fork truck. I, it is not salvageable. I think as soon as I put pressure on that, it'll just crumble in half. So I have some uh, sizes that are in the, in the garage that'll go up to here, 72. So six foot, so I might put some six foot sections in there. I tried to avoid seams, but listen, that's compound. It's got a little cut out there that I need to do. It's got a cut out here. So uh, the chance of me of cutting that all the way out as a big piece is probably zero anyway. So what I'll do is I'll try to use one of this piece here, uh, if it's not too damaged, in this spot and get my 72 inches out of it. And then I'll use the other half of it in the top. And then that gives me a piece behind it for this spot that's uh, may or may not be used. We'll find out, but let's go ahead and do that. So now that I know where I'm going to put my piece, right? I can go ahead and bring a, a cross piece in so that the it's reinforced and I'll notch out for that pipe. But um, that's the only reason why I don't have a cross piece, a supporting piece in there. And I'll probably run down from here to there. Uh, so it's only two foot there. I like to have two foot max between drywall screws. This is just a smidgen long. I'm going to let it ride uh, just so for the sake of getting this all done. Uh, I think that'll be okay. This piece has a middle piece, but then usually halfway up, I like to put another uh, support not for a fire break or anything but to keep this from when it gets hot bowing out see it's it's loose so some cross pieces and then i anchor it to the wall in addition so let's get that done All right, I cut the drywall out from that broken sheet. Well, let's see how good of a job I did. <laughs> I'm hoping it just, just goes right in and then I'll finish up the insulation, all that.
so exciting to me. I got one last sheet of drywall to do inside the house. One last sheet. So, ah, there we go. The only place where I put a seam in a wall, right there. And uh, <clears throat> I probably would have anyway because of the, the post and the notch and uh, the weirdness. So, it's all right. But every place else was a full sheet of drywall. Well, hey, everybody. Steve, a thousand year, doing a wrap-up video on my process for doing four foot at a section at a time. Uh, now, I'm just a do-it-yourself or off-grid. I'm not a professional. I'm not an engineer. So, you do you. But in my neck of the woods, I feel that this is super superior. So, Central Texas, uh, I don't get a lot of rain between 18 and 37 inches a year. Humidity can be high, uh, but I'm, I'm sure with the bubble wrap and the mineral wool, which is hydrophobic, it's pushing it out. Five eighths inch drywall is killer. Let me rotate and we can look at the place together. Uh, so I started taping. I did a video where I t half tape, but I got to tape it all out. But it, it's looking pretty darn good. And uh, once I get it taped and floated, then uh, I'll put the Italian plaster on. I'll finish this door, then I can work on the uh, Spanish door. Look, we bought some odds and ends for the Spanish door. Like the They're cool. Yeah, I got some big straps there, and some blacksmithy straps. So, uh, <clears throat> but I do want to point out a couple of things here real quick. Well, one, I left the uh, ventilation system that's in the, the high cube. So there's a vent right there, and there's a vent there. And the way I did the bubble wrap is... Uh, um, in front of the ventilation system. So there's a universal air pocket between the bubble wrap and getting out. And I'll show you where it gets out. So I did set up the uh, shipping container to breathe. So when you take a look here, let me uh, hit rope. So I'm looking up and I know it'll be hard to see, but between the log and the insulation, you'll see I dumped the, the bubble wrap out. So there's one universal air pocket all the way through this shipping container. Now I did that with the idea that when I superheat the outside, that there'll be a way for the hot air during the day to exit and it'll exit here. Most of the time, this will be open most of the time. Uh, and then the, uh, I'm going to put a metal bar across the top there with holes ventilated in it so it can breathe. And I might even put something where I can slide it close. But I, I might just drill holes through metal. And between the log and the roof will be a perforated metal plate. Or maybe I'll even buy, uh, you know, the uh, the alligator uh, grid work, stainless steel, and cut it and put it in there and spray paint it. I'm not sure. Nevertheless, uh, I think that that air pocket is the final, like, uh, pay attention and maybe do that as well if you follow this. But... Um, you know, you start with, if you start with your post and, I, and not use rough post, if you'd use finished post, uh, four foot up between, it's drywall and it would be super fast. Now I cut out all of this fancy stuff, uh, right? But And I also, because it's a high cube, it's nine foot up there and I used that. So I didn't use eight foot sheets. If you could find 10 footers, get 10 foot. So um, the drywall and then the electric is done. You see some of it I've already cut out the pockets for it. So the posts, the pockets, the bubble wrap, which I used in for stop, you do you, which has aluminum foil with bubble wrap in between. Um, and then we saw the mineral wool and then we saw uh, the 5 8 inch drywall. That system we know does can do up to a 50 to 60 degree temperature difference between the outside and the inside, which is going to make it very easy for me to make this a comfortable, whatever we choose, 72 Fahrenheit, F for Fahrenheit, F scale for freedom scale. For the rest of you, what is that? What's comfortable for y'all in Celsius? I don't know, uh, but it'd be comfortable. Uh, and uh, the system, I'm super happy with it. I've been in here a year, and the only time that I saw a moisture problem was on the unfinished product when we were using uh, propane for heat, which is a vapor generating process. Um, and for the bathroom, I'll rotate. So this is the bathroom, will be the bathroom nook. It's not right now. But you notice I have a window here. 
And then you probably can't notice, but I can't deliver all of these posts to run moisture that way. So moisture runs through here. And if I need to put in a fan, I will. And then around the potty space, which will be here, I'm going to have, or I've already bought a uh, ship's ventilation, which is all stainless steel and a solar powered. So there'll be constant uh, uh, negative pressure here to um, vent the potty stuff out. It'll be on during the day during with solar and it'll be off at night. That'll be fine. Um, I really don't have an odor problem now at all as it is. Um, I'm using composting method uh, with cedar and pine. So um, there's no odor to speak of. Anyway, uh, that wraps this up. This is a long format video. I know it is, but it's all the steps in detail. I took my time. I fast walked you through the obvious repetitive stuff, but I took my time. So if you watch this long form video, you'll know how to build in four foot sections. If you were more of a carpenter than I and you honored the 48 inches or whatever the proper dimension is for you, you can really punch these out fast. And the last part that I didn't talk about, <clears throat> the reason why I did this post is I'm gonna pour concrete on the roof of my shipping container and all of that concrete load will be transferred through and then into piers on the outside. Uh, so I've, I won't have an implosion a collapse of my roof while I pour concrete. So there is a method to my madness and it's to make a really nice Santa Fe mission style house. And uh, this is Steve, a thousand years Holmes. If you lasted this long, I really appreciate your company. Like, subscribe and follow me along.